Two months ago, the French planemaker Dassault signed yet another contract for its Rafale fighter, this time selling 42 planes to Indonesia. This was just one of many Rafale sales since the beginning of 2021. In total, 188 Rafales were sold in that period, a record number in many ways. So how come the Rafale is suddenly selling so well? What's its secret? This video will try to answer that question. Fighter jets are cool alright, but sometimes you want to get medieval. Today's sponsor Raid Shadow Legends will help. It's one of the biggest mobile games out there with huge big bosses to beat, a crap load of champions to collect, ooh this one I like, level them up, equip them and unleash hell. I love the Doom Tower they put in the game, basically a huge prison packed with the meanest bosses around. Apparently the tower is failing and it's up to you, the player, to get those baddies before they get out. You get to assemble a party of champions to storm the tower, choose wisely and use specialists, be wary of debuff magic, those tower bosses love those, and some like Scarab King are just crazy, he barely takes damage, you gotta lower his base stats first with magic. That's probably the best part of the game for me, figuring out the best mix of your champions and their abilities to climb to the top of the tower. I plan which champions to bring into the fight, which abilities to use and when. You sort of feel like a general leading your army to battle. Raid Shadow Legends will give Bank of Viewers a sweet starter pack. If you're a new player and you use my link or scan this QR code, you'll get a free pack worth almost 30 bucks. We're talking a free champion, Tyrell, hmm, shiny, 200,000 silver, an experience boost, an energy refill and one ancient shard. That'll help you summon an awesome champion right away. You'll get those rewards during the next 30 days by clicking here in game, that's your inbox. So hurry up, join me and slay some monsters. Let's go back to the Rafale. It's not a new plane, it had a very protracted development, stemming from the end of the Cold War. It got accepted into active service with the French Navy some 20 years ago. It took 14 more years for the Rafale to see its first expert success. In 2015, Egypt ordered 24 airframes. That same year, Qatar ordered the same number. India was a famous prospective Rafale buyer, but after years of negotiations for a much larger number, the final outcome was a fairly modest buy of 36 planes in 2016. 2017 saw Qatar top up its previous order with another contract, this time for 12 more Rafales. Then came a small drought, until 2021. From then on, the Rafale seems to be collecting orders left and right. Greece ordered 24 Rafales, Croatia ordered 12, some of those planes were second-hand ones, straight from the French Air Force. But given that some of those airframes will be replaced by new builds for the French Air Force, they will still be counted as sales. Also, Egypt ordered 30 more Rafales. The Indonesian 42 plane order came recently, as mentioned, but the biggest sale by far was announced at the end of 2021, when the United Arab Emirates purchased 80 airframes. All in all, out of 284 airframes sold abroad, the Rafale sold two-thirds of that entire number in the last 15 months. Indeed, the 188 Rafales sold abroad from 2021 until today basically match what the French Ministry of Defense ever ordered for themselves. How are the Rafale's biggest competitors doing? Some sold more from 2001 onward in total, sure. The F-35 is a more advanced plane, an industrial juggernaut of a program with incomparable political clout. The F-16 also sold more overall, even when not including second-hand sales. But not even the F-35 managed to outsell the Rafale since 2021. Of course, this one happy period for a fall does not mean it will keep selling like this. The F-35 will almost certainly regain its crown soon. But it's still an anomaly. How does a plane that's over 20 years old now, a plane that's not the most capable one out there, a plane that's not the cheapest one, suddenly get so many orders? Why have so many sales happened within just 15 months? The likely reason is a lucky mix of several big factors all coinciding at the same time in the last few years. Capability-wise, the Rafale was pretty advanced back in 2001, but back then it was a bare-bones plane. France could sell some air-to-air -air missiles with it, but that was about it. Even those were lagging in some regards behind the US offerings like the AMRAAM. While France did produce its own laser-guided bombs due to the fairly small scale of production spread over many years, those were expensive. 
more so than the similar US bombs. Plus France had no targeting pod to offer, so the plane can search for and designate targets on its own. Over the years, however, and especially in the last 10 or so years, France has been adding more and more capabilities to the Rafale. In 2009, it added the Democles targeting pod, which was a bit behind the curve technologically back then. But it was since superseded by the Talios pod, in service from 2020, which basically offers everything the latest US targeting pods offer. Other components were added as well, like the Aerios reconnaissance pod, generally similar to the US DB-110 recon pod. The AASM family of smart bombs was added, later renamed to hammer bombs. Those were used to great effect over Libya in 2011, certainly helping market the Rafale's added capabilities. And hammer bomb kits are basically covering several weapon types. They come in small form bodies, where six bombs can easily be carried by a Rafale. Variants made for 125 kilo and 1000 kilo bomb bodies have also been tested. So in a way they're partially offering the small form punch of the US small diameter bomb. Hammers also come with a propulsion kit, which means they're basically guided missiles. It gives them decent reach, even when fired from very low altitudes, even allowing off-bore shots where the bomb turns 90 degrees right after it's been released. Some of those capabilities aren't readily available in other countries' weapons at this size and price range. US weapons like Paveway bombs can still be used as a cheaper option if a customer can buy those from the US. France also added the Exocé anti-ship missile to Rafale's infantry, though in its current form the missile is limited by range and guidance options. Scalp EG is a large, somewhat stealthy cruise missile of great precision due to its satellite guidance, terrain reference navigation and an infrared seeker for terminal accuracy. The Rafale's weapons can also be used for hunting down enemies' radars and SAM sites. The Rafale was, besides the F-22, one of the few planes whose advanced electronic emission location capabilities allowed for that back in the 2000s. Rafale's Spectra system can geolocate the enemy's radar and the plane can then input the targeting information into a bomb, like the aforementioned hammer bomb. While the initial 10 years of the Rafale did not see that many additions and improvements, from the 2010s onward the French plane maker did try to keep up with the technology, offering fairly frequent updates, like improvements to the spectra system, geolocators, missile warning sensors, infrared tracking system and radar. Dassault was fairly quickly with the rollout of an advanced active electronically scanned radar array, with newly built Rafales since 2012 getting said radar. For comparison, the Eurofighter consortium took a longer time to agree on financing a similar radar. Right now, only the Kuwaiti and Qatari Eurofighters have them, delivered from 2021 onward. Original consortium countries are yet to receive their AISA radars. The F-16V also offered an AISA radar a few years behind the Rafale. Finally, France integrated the Meteor air-to-air -air missile to the Rafale, and Qatar ordered them back in 2015, even before the French Air Force declared operational capability. So the Rafale is now a fairly complete combat package, in most regards more so than the Eurofighter or Gripen. If pure interception and air-to-air -air capabilities are wanted, the Eurofighter might be more valuable. But the fact is, actual capabilities are just one of the factors. Was the Rafale cheap? Did it win all those orders based on its price? Well, not really. But the thing is, an exact comparison on price is impossible, as different deals included different items that aren't released to the public. There are literally examples of the same plane being sold for two to four times the price to a different customer, due to various unknown details in the contract. But still, with enough sales to make a rough average sum, one could make a very rough estimate. In today's money, the Rafale with support is likely to cost around 200 or 220 million euros. If not as many weapons and ancillary systems are purchased, or if you buy a lot of planes at once, like the UAE, that figure can drop a bit, perhaps to 180 or 190 million euros per plane. So it's quite expensive, yes. But if one disregards smaller planes like the F-16 or Gripen, the remaining planes roughly as capable or more capable than Rafale can be even more expensive. Let's take the Eurofighter as an example. It started off cheap. Austria actually overpaid considering just how bare-bone its variant is. The Saudis got a superb deal even if their price tag represents a plane with zero support, as they were basically the first big customer. But ever since, other customers had to pay an arm and a leg for Eurofighters. 
prices given are adjusted for inflation and given out in dollars. It could be that these sales were a way to finance development of various new features for the Eurofighter, like weapons or radar. As mentioned, those Gulf countries are the first ones to get the new AESA radar. The Super Hornet didn't have as many sales, so getting a valid average price figure is harder. Nor did the modern F-15 after its redesign a decade ago. Price tags given in the media are quite wild and likely suggest some of those figures are barebone planes without any support included. The Australian deal is a good example for that, as there the cost difference between the barebone planes and ones with support was disclosed and made the planes two time pricier. While the Super Hornet is possibly somewhat cheaper than the Rafale, it's also somewhat limited compared to the Rafale. Then there's the F-35. Given its massive production scale, its price tag was lowered quite a bit over the years. Again, there is a big range of figures, with the sub-200 million ones likely pertaining to barebone planes without support. Still, the F-35 seemed to be cheaper than either the F-15 or Eurofighter, and possibly not much more expensive than the Rafale, considering you're getting a stealthy, super-advanced plane for that price. But, and this is pretty much key, some planes the US doesn't want to export to just anyone. The F-35 is a flagship product of the USA. If its secrets would leak to unsuitable countries, that would compromise the effectiveness of American air power. So the F-35 is not going to be offered to the likes of Egypt, Indonesia and so on. And there's where the Rafale comes in. Unlike the US, France will sell its plane to pretty much anyone. Its national long-term interests wouldn't be hit as much even if some secrets would leak out. And when compared to the even more pricier Eurofighters or F-15s, the Rafale can come out as a pretty decent deal. Sure, the F-16 or Gripen are cheaper, but on the whole also somewhat less capable. So France is really aiming at those not-so-poor countries with air forces that usually number a hundred or more planes and can afford larger planes in their mix. Croatia would be the only odd outlier. US technology sharing cuts both ways though. In some instances, when the US doesn't want to sell a certain missile or a piece of equipment, the buyer will go to another seller, perhaps even to the saw and its Rafale. So even F-15s or F-18s could lose attractiveness due to such limitations. But on the other hand, there are US components in pretty much every Western-made plane or missile. While there are far fewer of those in the Rafale, compared to the Gripen for example, they still exist. Egypt's purchase of the Rafale was famous back in the day as Egypt wanted the Sculpt EG cruise missile with the Rafales for the second tranche of their planes. Yet the US stopped that sale as some parts in the missile were US sourced. Negotiations between Egypt and France got protracted for years, and the second batch of Rafales got ordered only recently, still without Sculpt EG missiles nominally. Back in 2018, the French Minister of Defense not only confirmed the US ITAR restrictions were to blame, but also that France was working on replacing key components in the Sculpt missile with ones not sourced from the US, so the sale could still happen in the future. The ITAR regulation prevents certain US-made components from being sold to certain countries, and that list doesn't include just the likes of Egypt. Back in the day, there were media reports that some US firms were angry about ITAR regulations as they believed they caused them the competitions to sell fighter planes to India and Brazil, for example. It's not always just about the plane itself. Even if the plane can be sold, sometimes some advanced weapons or sensors within the plane are not available. Or sometimes support needed for the plane to be maintained needs to be done by the US, without the owner of the plane being allowed to have insight into certain logistical matters. At other times, it's also about technology transfers. Many of the bigger countries seek to get some know-how when buying many planes. Yet the US is quite careful about such transfers, so those could be off-putting to some countries. Or it can be about long-term costs. The F-35 is famously not cheap to sustain and operate, even if its flyaway price is quite competitive. All those issues and restrictions may form a mix of conditions that make US planes less desirable packages to certain customers thus leaving more room in the market for the Rafale. On top of that, the US has been pushing Russian planes out of the market to an extent. After making a new law, called CATSA, the US has threatened certain countries with sanctions if they went through with buying arms from Russia. That's precisely why the already signed contract for the Su-35s that Indonesia had was annulled in December 2021, and why just months later the Rafale got chosen. 
A similar story is rumored to be happening with Egypt. Under pressure from the US, Egypt allegedly stopped accepting Su-35 airframes for which it had signed a contract. It remains to be seen what will happen with those planes. Curiously, Egypt ordered more Rafales just after the issue with Sukhoi deliveries arose. Certain US allies have been more lucky. India, while also reportedly threatened by select US sanctions for buying Russian S-400 SAMs, seems to have gotten some kind of a waiver in the end. In practice, all that means that the Rafale is well positioned politically to be sold to countries not exclusively aligned to the West. The US has the West-oriented market covered, but its own policies sometimes impeded the chances of its own planes being sold to other countries. France, offering a fairly complete package and few strings attached, has taken advantage of that with its Rafales recently selling like hotcakes. It's plausible that in the last several years, France has been striving to use even fewer US components for the Rafale and its weaponry, and its very recent export successes are partially the reason for it. It's not just the Scalp cruise missile either. The French Minister of Defense also said the next generation of Mecha air-to-air -air missiles, now in development, will be purposefully designed to contain no US technology. The final factor in the Rafale's success is familiarity with the French systems, political ties and timing. Most of the buyers of the Rafale were users of previous French planes, like the Mirage 2000. Of the seven countries that ordered Rafale, only two did not use French planes previously. And those that did buy Rafales bought them when many of their previous Mirages were clearly too old to be efficiently used anymore. So the Rafale is definitely on a roll. How long will it last is hard to say, but given the current political climate and more and more countries arming themselves, especially in the Middle East and the Pacific, it's likely the Rafale will see more sales. Given how many it has already, it will soon outsell even its predecessor, the Mirage 2000, which sold almost 300 airframes outside France throughout its career. So it's not always about being the top product. Sometimes the right mix of politics, price and capability, and the general geopolitical situation in the world helps as well. And remember, Binkov may talk about hypothetical wars, but only real peace can bring us all together.